Welcome to my studio. Have you tried masking fluids with your watercolors? Did you find it very strong smelling? Did it gum up or wreck your brushes? Perhaps it stained or tore your paper? Mm. I want to share my experience with the new masking fluids that are out that are water-based. Here is Schmincke Masking Fluid and Demco Masking Fluid. They are latex-free, ammonia-free, and that means no smell and water cleanup. Water cleanup means no more wrecked brushes. Hey, stick through this video. I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to do a watercolor and why we use masking fluid. And later on, I'm going to troubleshoot and provide some more details of how you can get the most from these new products. Schmecke Masking Fluid comes in clear, which I prefer to use, or this blue, which I'm using because it will show up well in the video. You'll notice that I've poured it into a small container. This is important. After all, masking or frisket is basically a fast-drying, rubbery glue. So you don't want to have your big container open, slowly evaporating and drying while you're painting meticulously. It's best to decant it. That way your product will have a longer shelf life. Also, you don't want to take a brush and repeatedly dip it into a whole container. Again, that will contaminate it. And frankly, I'm clumsy. I'll probably spill that container. So it's best that it's just a little amount and not a big uh, container. Here I'm using a Princeton synthetic brush. It is a filbert size eight. And you can see I can get a variety of marks as well as look at that, turn it on its side and get a nice line. You can also use a thin liner brush. This is a size two and you'll see I'm going to get a very nice crisp detail with that. If you're not confident with a fine tip brush, you can also choose the applicator. See the fine nozzle? You can just squeeze it out and have a fine line. Additionally, we sell the jacquard metal tips, usually for henna painting. Well, they screw right onto the top of this nozzle, and you can bring that point size down to a 0 0.5, 0 0.7, or 0 0.9. So, masking fluid on one side, no masking fluid on the other side. While I'm waiting for my masking fluid to thoroughly dry, I'm going to paint on the left hand side. Here I'm mixing my colors with the Schmincke Hordam, my favorite. I've had this set for many, many years. And I'm using Saturn Red, which sounds like it comes from Saturn. It almost does. The pigment name is Benzamidazolone. <laughs> Try to say that. I'm mixing it with Sapphire Blue. Is it Sapphire Blue? is one of the um, greenest of the blues. So mixing those two complementary colors, I get a nice stormy sky blue that I'm looking for. Here I'm showing how you can wet the paper around your white uh, object, and then take your bold color and just drop it into place. And the water really only travels up to where the wet paper is. So you do have quite a bit more control in watercolor than beginners believe, but still, you got to be fast, you got to be careful, and you got to paint around those white areas. And it's a little tricky. You're tempted to kind of outline everything and then fill in the details. But if you wait too long, those outlines stay and are quite obvious in your painting. Another trick is that you notice I'm stopping and mixing colors. So I'm pretty comfortable at eye mixing. And so on one side of the um, twig to the other side of the twig, I'm getting very similar colors. If you're just starting, sometimes the color between the twigs can be very different, and then it, it looks a little bit weird. Here I'm getting a pretty close color match, but I'm not perfectly careful. Oops, look at that. Got a little tiny for that um, a little pussy willow tip, but overall, it's okay. But watch how fast, watch how fast you can paint when you have masking fluid. Again, mix up a lot more color than you can e expect you'll be using. And then paint, paint, paint right over top of everything. Why? Because the masking fluid's protecting it all. Very handy. Nice, bold colors. Very cool. Then, of course, you want to leave this dry. Of course, colors always dry a lot lighter than you expect. So in this demo, I'm going to paint another glaze right over top of the previous color. That's going to richen and darken my blues. But on the other side, I'm going to have to paint carefully around the outline of my Pussy Willows again. And you're going to find I'm not exact. Now, I'm using a big brush. Again, so it looks good in the video. This is a 
uh, Da Vinci size 12 Maestro. It does come to a fine point. It holds a lot of water, but if I was doing this for myself without masking fluid, I would be using a much finer brush. But hey, big brushes are fun to use. Might as well if you got them. So there's my nice, rich, bold color. And here I'm on this side coming back in, same color, painting carefully around the outsides. And you're gonna see that I'm making a few misses here and there, uh, but that's okay. It's a little, little more organic than the other side. I don't use a hairdryer to speed up the drying of the paint uh, for two reasons. One, the airflow disturbs the paint flow and it may blow the color up against the masking creating darker ridges or outlines around the masking fluid. I also think the heat may cook the masking fluid into the paper and make it difficult to remove later. Do not wait too long not longer than a day or two before removing masking. It is a type of glue bond permanently to the paper. So here I am painting carefully, carefully around the background, trying to be fast, trying to not let any hard edges build up in that background and trying to maintain the same color on each side of the twig. So there's a lot to think about. By the way, I do not paint this fast. This video is double time sped up. It's also edited so that it looks like I really know what I'm doing. Don't think I paint this fast in real life. Often I spend more time with my brush hovering over the surface trying to decide what I'm going to do next. <laughs> so uh, don't think I'm that good. Leave everything to dry again and then when you come back always test 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 to make sure your paper is dry i also would recommend wiping away the excess paint if there's paint blobs on the top of your masking fluid here's where you're gonna smudge them um, i'm also using my fingers which are handy for sure pardon the pun but they're also dirty little digits and it's humid in the summer so if your fingers get too moist or too dirty you're going to end up smudging that background right across your white precious paper so all your work will be for naught so i'm going to show you later on in the video how a five dollar or three dollar item called a rubber cement pickup will save you a lot of headaches here because it's fun um, i'm going to pull off the tape because that's uh, an enjoyable part of any process isn't it so here's a close-up of my nice, crisp, protected white edges on that nice, rich background. And you'll see the background flows smoothly right behind those little tree branches. Very nice. And yep, it can rub off onto your fingers, but it didn't rub off onto my white. So next, everything's pretty crisp and hard and bright. Now we need to add back some nature. I'm going to show you how to do a bit of lifting with a wet brush and adding up some little soft, fuzzy blue spots. So now I have these bright white silhouettes and we need to add a bit of nature back into them. So I'm going to take that same blue that, that I used in the background and I'm going to kind of dab it on just in a little bit of texture to help uh, simulate the puffiness of those pussy willows. And on the other side, I notice now that, well, those crisp edges are probably a little bit too crisp. And I want a bit of softness, especially on the pussy willows that are further away. So I'm going to use an older synthetic brush and I'm going to go back in. I'm going to wet the area around the pussy willow and use a soft brush to kind of just scrub away to lift some of the color and to soften the edges. And I'm going to play this little softening game not everywhere over the piece, but just in some places. And that soft out of focus look is gonna work well. So I'll leave some out of focus and leave some in crisp focus. You can play a lot with um, atmospheric perspective with just that little trick of softening the edges. Um, so now we're gonna mix up a brown. I don't have burnt sienna in my palette. I do have number 670 matter brown, and I'm gonna lighten it with a bit of yellow and a bit of my Saturn orange, and I'm gonna darken it with a bit of my um, bright um, phthalo blue. 
Now, it's a trick in photographs. Sometimes when you're looking at a tree branch, the darkest side is not left or right. The darkest side is actually right in the center facing you. And on the outside edges of each visible twig is a bright white highlight. And this can help your watercolors look a little bit more photoreal if you can just maintain that nice crisp edge, which is easier to do on something that has that cleanness of masking fluid, where on the other side, my branches are a little bit more wobbly, a little bit more organic. Getting a nice crisp white highlight down each side of the branch is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm using a dagger synthetic brush for this. and it's, it's kind of funny. Normally when I'm working in watercolors, I'm turning my book upside down in this way and that way. And here for the video, I've had to leave the book just flat. So moving my brush around to get the right angle uh, has become kind of interesting. I'm glad I didn't smear the <laughs> painting with my hand. Could have happened. Anyway, so here I'm working all angles and getting those brown uh, branches in just perfect. Playing around with lights and darks and lights and darks and really letting the, the wet and wet do most of the work. Now I think I'm just going to put a finishing touch on here just to make sure that those pussy willows are attached to their branches. Just a little bit of darkness so that uh, they're not all floating. On the foreground they're going to look and be attached and on the background they're going to uh, just sit there really nice. And there you have it. Wait, there's more! <laughs> Let's look at other ways to apply masking fluid. Here's a half inch synthetic brush. And I'm just showing you that you can get different marks and different shapes all from the same brush. Have you ever used a ruling pen before? This is an old drafting tool, usually used for inks. You can also put acrylics in there, but for masking fluid, it's a nice way of getting uh, predictable precision uh, lines very easily. Uh, the calipers are adjustable with that little screw. Here's the Demco product. It's uh, a, a little bit thicker, um, but both work well. This is a Speedball number 513 nib, one of my favorites. Um, get really, really fine detail if you want to do writing or have little tiny details. It's very handy. And here's a dagger brush. So you can do expressive, free-formed calligraphy marks with masking fluid. Um, here's a technique, just uh, splattering it on with an old uh, toothbrush. Um, great for foliage and other special effects or mixed media. And here we're using a little sponge. Just, uh, I thought I'd see if I could get away with it, and yeah, you can. So a nice little dabbing. Uh, that's a synthetic sponge. You could also use a natural sponge. And here we're applying it with a bigger brush in a, a dry brush. So it doesn't have to be a fully wet saturated brush. And here we're just floating on some colors, some bright green. Um, again, it repels where the masking fluid is and the paint will go onto the paper. And even the really thin applications are showing up well. So once you have your wet color, you're not just limited to that. While it's still wet, why not add another color? And see how these paint brush strokes can flow all over the background regardless of what you're doing to protect the white of the area. Wait till it's fully dry. And here I'm showing using a Q-tip. Take away all those little wet puddles that sit on the top of your masking fluid. Those will smudge. So a little bit of paper towel and you can wipe it off easily. Okay. Hey, remember uh, those dirty fingers I mentioned not being good? Here is the rubber cement pickup. It's Wonderful. So our fingerprints grab everything, all the dirt, all the debris, but the rubber cement pickup is really meant to stick to that masking fluid. That rubbery substance will grab easily. And you can be quite aggressive uh, rubbing off the masking fluid a little bit faster um, and you're not going to hurt the paint film at all. I'll also point out the Demco product. Now I tested it on seven different kinds of paper and this only happened once, just in time for the video. So if you've ever had um, masking fluid stain a paper and then nobody believes you, I wouldn't have believed you either until I did it on this paper. So I'm not sure what caused it this time, but I can tell you many, many other papers worked fine. Uh, so here I am doing the little fine details that we did with the croquil nib and the ruling pen comes off beautifully. Here we're rubbing off 
the um, sponge and the splatter. So it's a nice mixed media uh, background if you wish. Another thing about using the rubber cement pickup, if I was doing this with my fingers, by now the friction alone would probably have wore my fingerprints off. <laughs> So uh, you can save yourself some heat friction if you just use that rubber cement pickup. One thing you shouldn't do is use masking fluid on unsized paper like drawing paper or printmaking paper. All watercolor paper has been uh, sufficiently sized. Um, if the paper isn't sized, that masking fluid is going to bond to the surface and you're going to tear it. So I knew this would happen, but I wanted to show you again, you're not crazy. Uh, it was just unsized paper that you used. I also wanted to try many different types of paper. As long as the paper is sized, it can be hot press, it can be cold press. Here we have a handmade rough paper, which I predicted to be a failure. And uh, nope, Schmenke worked beautiful on it. Look at it, lifting off. It pays to test papers with these new masking fluids. Speaking of papers, have you tried the new Stonehenge black watercolor paper? Mm, stay tuned for our next video uh, or blog post on gouache painting on black watercolor paper. It is amazing. You can also visit paintspot.ca for several project ideas, perfect for uh, junior high, high school. And as usual, please come see us. Please come shop with us, paintspot.ca, for these materials and more. Until next time, happy painting.